Hey guys, Redripers here, and today I'm going to show you how you can disassemble and replace a thermal paste on an Xbox One. So you're going to need a few tools. So the first one is a Torx screwdriver set. So I believe this is a Torx 9-bit that most of the screws in the console use. And we're also going to need some Phillips and a large-ish flathead. Now you're also likely going to want a metal spudger, just for getting some of the harder to undo clips. And also some plastic guitar picks, for getting some of the other clips undone. And you may also want some curved tweezers, just to make it easier to unplug some of the harder to get to plugs. So the first thing you need to do, if you haven't already, is you just need to cut across where the warranty sticker is on the back. So if you have a sharp knife, just cut across along the line, as these two halves are going to need to be separated. And if the sticker hasn't been cut, it will stop you pulling them apart. So once you've done that, if you haven't already, the first thing we need to do is we need to take the vent off on this side of the console. So to the left of where the disk drive is, if I turn it like so, we're going to need to take this venting off. So if I get my metal spudger and I start up in the corner up here and I go around and carefully unclip the clips. And there we go, that's now popped off. So we can put this vent into one side and now that's off. We can now slide this plastic piece out as well. So if we get hold of it and we carefully slide it back like so, that will also come out. Now what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to undo the plastic clip behind here, the plastic clips behind here, and then slowly work our way around the console all the way till to this side until all of the plastic clips are undone. So for this one here, if you feel behind it with your fingers, you should be able to feel where the plastic clip is. And I've found the best thing to do is to get a guitar pick, feel around the back and get the guitar pick into where the clips are and then slide the guitar pick in so that disengages the clip. Now this can be a little tricky and it can be helped by pushing down on the top bit here just so the clip undoes a little. And there we go, that feels like the plastic clip here has been separated from the hook down here. So now we're going to come round to the back and we're going to push down on the top bit whilst trying to get a plastic spudger in. And there we go, you heard that clip undo. And we will now, we'll leave that guitar pick in there and we will now just go around the edge gently with the guitar pick, getting the rest of the clips undone. So that's most of the clips on this back bit done, so if I just turn it to the other side, and again I just get the guitar pick in, and I try to run it along the edge to undo the clips, and there we go, those clips on that side have now come undone. So now this top piece here is quite loose, but you do not want to pull it straight up off, as the front panel will be damaged and you risk damaging the cable if you don't do it carefully. So now this top bit is loose with the clips undone, if you hold it at the side like so, and also support the front panel over here, and you just tilt it forward and towards yourself, you just want to be careful not to damage the plastic clips. Now I'm just going to run my guitar pick along this side, as it feels like one of the clips hasn't come undone. And there we go, now the front panel is unclipped, we're going to carefully stand it up like so, as hopefully you should be able to see, the ribbon connecting the front panel is here. So I will carefully move this across a little more, just so hopefully you can see it better. I'm not sure I can get you too good of an angle on this, but there is the front ribbon connector connecting the front panel controls on the front to the board. So I found the best thing to do is to get some curved tweezers like this. And you want to unhook the blue bit of the ribbon cable from behind the plug. So I've unhooked it from behind the plug, and then I've just used my metal spudger to stop it from clipping back over the plug. And then I'm going to carefully pull back the cream coloured plug so that it unseats the ribbon cable. And there we go, the ribbon cable has now been unplugged from the front panel. So now I've got that undone, I'll just try to show you it a bit clearer. So hopefully you should be able to see this ribbon cable here. So that blue bit there that comes over the top, that hooks over the plug. And that is what you want to make sure is unhooked from over the plug socket before you go move this part of the plug apart. So when it's shut, it's closed like that. And to undo it, you pull back on each side of the cream tabs like so. So that's when the plug is in the undone position. And that's what it's like when it's closed. So you want to be, have it undone so that you can then take the ribbon cable out. Now I'll just put the main console to one side for a minute. And now I'll just take this top plastic off away from the front panel connector. So to do that, if you get something like a plastic spudger like this, this is the easiest. And you put it behind the clips that are running along here. There are clips running along all here. You should be able to see that the clips are on the front panel and then the hooks are on this main piece. 
So if you get your spudgy behind it and you pull the clips forward and you just gently pull up on this larger piece, you can also get your finger in on some of them. If you pull up on this larger piece, the clips should stop from getting onto the hooks. And if I just work my way along, still gently pulling up on the larger piece to stop the hook from clipping back in. Ah, oh, and there we go, I accidentally let it go, so it's clipped back in. If I just come along again, keeping a gentle amount of pressure up just to stop the clips from clipping back in. And now I've unclipped all of them. The two halves have come apart. So as you can see, this is the side with all of the hook pieces on. So these bits here are the hooks. And then we have the other part of the hooks here that have been clipped onto all of them. So there we go, that is the front panel piece separated away from the top piece. So now if I bring the console back, and I will just get that plastic guitar pick out. And now we first want to just unplug the aerial cable from the front and the speakers. So to unplug the antenna cable, all you need to do is just either get some needle nose pliers or with your fingers, gently get hold of the plug and pull it upwards. And there we go, that should pop off like that. And then for the speaker, if you make sure you hold onto the female receptacle on the board, and then with your other hand, get hold of the plug. If you gently wiggle it from side to side and pull it up, it should unplug like so. So we now have those two wires disconnected from the front panel. We now want to come over to this back corner here, and we want to do the same that we did with the aerial cable on the front on this wireless module. So if we just gently get hold of the plug, and we pull it up so it pops off from its connector. And there we go, that's now unplugged off there. And we can now get our Torx screwdriver, and we can undo these two screws here. And now those two screws have been removed from there, we can now just get hold of the board, trying to hold onto it on each corner, and it may be useful if you use something like a plastic spudger on this corner that is right where the metal is. And we just want to be pulling it up to unplug it from the plug. And there we go, that is now unplugged. So as you can see, there is the male side of the plug on this, and then the female side of it there. So we can now put this module to one side, and now we just need to remove the eight screws that are holding this top metal plate to the rest of the console. So we need to remove that screw, 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 and that screw. So if I start undoing them, and there we go, now those eight screws have been removed. This metal plate should now be able to be lifted up. However, before you do that, you want to be cautious because this connector here its board is connected by a wire to the motherboard in this corner, so you can either remove those three screws there to detach the module from this metal case, or, like I'm going to do, you can gently lift up this front cover, tilt it over to the side like so, and then carefully get your hand in and unplug the plug down here. So if you get hold of the plug and you wiggle it from side to side while it's pulling up, you should be able to unplug it from the motherboard. So I can put this top metal plate to one side, and we can now start taking out the rest of the internals. So we will start off with the drive. So to unplug it, all you have to do is just get hold of the SATA plug here, wiggle it and pull it up. And that's that one unplugged. And then if we do the same for the power, so wiggle it from side to side and pull up, that will disconnect both connectors from the motherboard. And to remove the drive from the sled, all you need to do is first remove the four screws on the back here. And now those four screws have been removed, you should be able to separate the two halves, like so. And then to disconnect the drive from this plate, all you have to do is remove these other four screws on the back. So if I just take them out. And now those four screws have been removed, this plastic plate should lift off like so. And then if you want, you can disconnect the drive from the plug just by pulling it apart like so. And you can replace the drive if you want. So I will just quickly put this back together, so if I just plug the plug back in, get our plastic plate with the holes lining up to the plug on this side, line it up like so, and then if I just put the four screws back in, and there we go, those four screws are now back in, so the plastic plate is now connected back up to the drive, and we now just want to get this drive sled and this holder, and we want it so that the plug is on the side with the arrow, and if we place it into the holes like so, and then turn it over, you should be able to see the four plastic parts sticking up through the holes again. And you may have to hold it with one hand whilst fiddling about with these screws just to get them in. So if I just put one of these screws in part of the way just to hold the drive into the plastic shroud. And then I can do the same with the rest of these screws. So just putting them in part way before we tighten them down. 
just to make sure that the sled doesn't end up going in wonky. And then we will just tighten the four screws down. You don't need to put these too tight, just enough that they aren't going to come loose and the drive is going to come loose inside. So there we go, the whole assembly is now back together. So I will put this to one side. And now on the console, we're now going to remove the disk drive. So it's pretty simple again, if we just get hold of our SATA cable here and we pull up on the plug, wiggling it from side to side. And then we do the same with this plug here. We get hold and wiggle from side to side, that should unplug it from the motherboard. And then we can just lift the drive up and out like so. So now we've taken most of those parts out. We can also now just separate the metal case from the plastic shell just by lifting it up and out. If you want to do that before you take the other parts out, you can do, but I find it easier just to take those out first so you've got somewhere to hold on on the metal case. So I can now put this bottom plastic piece to one side. And now we're just going to take the heatsink off from the motherboard. So to do that, we first want to unplug the fan plug for this, just so we don't forget. So again, you just get hold of it and pull it up, wiggle it from side to side until it is unplugged, like so. And then once you've done that, we now need to take out these three plastic posts that are around the edge. To do these ones on the front, we're first going to need to take off this front board here. So if we just unscrew these three screws on the front, and now those three screws have been taken out, we can now hold it at the plug end here, where it is connected up to the motherboard. And we can gently wiggle it from side to side, pulling it upwards until it becomes disconnected. And there we go, that is now unplugged out from the motherboard, so we can put the front motherboard plate to one side. And with that front board disconnected, we can now get to the clips for these two posts here. So hopefully you should be able to see, all you need to do is pinch these two together so that they come out of the holes. And they should just fall out like so. Now for this white post up here, we do need to remove a screw. So if I turn it on its side like so, as you can see there is this screw here. So if we just undo that, and now that screw's out, we can now just lift the post out like so. I'll just put the screw back with the post so I don't get it mixed up. And I'll put this post to one side. So now we've taken those three posts out, we now just want to turn the whole motherboard over. And we now want to remove these four silver screws. So two at the back on this corner. So those two screws out of there, and then the two screws on this front corner here. And now we've removed those four silver screws, we now just need to remove the four black screws around the heatsink here. So if we just undo these four, and there we go, now the four silver screws and the four black screws have now been undone. We can now just keep the two halves held together by getting your hand under and holding the heatsink and the metal plate together, and gently turning it over like so. And with that now done, we can now hold on to the heatsink, and we can carefully go around the sides most likely at the front and this left side here, and just lift the board up and out. So it might be a bit tight, but you just want to gently work your way around the edges that are stuck. Feels like mine's a little stuck on this right corner here. I'm just trying to make sure nothing is stuck. And there we go, that's now separated. I did have a little trouble with it getting caught on the hole for the plug here, but now the board has been separated from the metal bottom plate. So now to remove the heatsink, if we turn the board back over like so, as you can see, there is this X plate on the back. Now, I don't know how well you'll be able to see this with the camera, but hopefully you should be able to see around the back there that there is sort of a little gap in the clips there where the metal clip goes over and sits into the ridge on this post from the heatsink. So what we're going to do is we're going to get a large-ish flathead screwdriver and we're going to get it into the little metal gap there. So hopefully you can see a little better there what I'm trying to demonstrate. This flathead is going to go in between the top of the bracket here and the bottom little arm that is holding the two halves together. So if I change my bit to my flathead bit and I will just pick say this corner here and I get my flathead in here and then I just gently twist it just trying to make the bottom clip that is holding it onto the post extend outwards so we can get it off from the post like so. And then if we come around to this side and do the same thing again, so get it in the little gap, and then just gently twist the bit so that the hooks unhook from the post. And then if I do it again on this side, and that is it disconnected. So all we were doing is was getting the flathead in on the bracket like so and then twisting it just to get this bottom 
bit of the bracket here to turn a little like that so it could unhook off the pulse. So now this metal bracket is off the back, the heatsink is now disconnected from the board. Now yours may not come away as easy as that, you may have to give your heatsink a little bit of a wiggle and gently move it if your thermal paste is stuck together, but that should allow you to disconnect your heatsink from your motherboard. So now we just need to clean the thermal paste off the GPU die and the heatsink. So to do that I'm going to use some rubbing alcohol and some paper towels and I'll be back with you once I've cleaned that off. And there we go, the thermal paste has now been cleaned off the heatsink and the GPU die. So I will just get my thermal paste and there we go, I've now got my thermal paste. So we're now going to put some onto the GPU die in a cross pattern. Now it's important that you don't put too little paste on as that could cause hotspots on the die. But if you put too much on, that shouldn't cause any damage as long as your thermal paste isn't electrically conductive, as the excess should get squeezed out to the sides. And now I'm also not sure if you need to do this, but there was some thermal paste in six points around on the metal shroud, so I'm going to put it back in those same places again. And there we go, the thermal paste has now been reapplied, and now we can put our heatsink back onto the motherboard. Now if you do want to separate the heatsink from the fan, all you have to do is just gently work these metal clips on each side, of the fan open and gently go to each side, getting the plastic fan up and away from the heatsink. However, you should be able to clean it out mostly just from the top without separating it and potentially breaking the clips. So now we're just going to place the heatsink back on, taking note of the side that our plug is on. So the side that the plug is on wants to match with the side that the header is on the motherboard. So this plug here needs to go into this header here. So that means we want to orientate the heatsink like so. So if we gently place it on like so, and then we hold the heatsink and the motherboard together as we turn it over, and then we place it down on top of the heatsink so we can hold the motherboard down like so. So now if we get hold of our X clip again, and we want to hook it over on one of the posts, and we want to get it lined up with the rest of the posts. And now it's likely you'll be able to get it clipped on one side, but then not on the other two. So if we get our flathead screwdriver again, and we just get it in the side like we did when we were undoing it, and we just give it a twist so that we can open the clips up a bit more, and so we can get them over the metal posts and hooked on into the groove. And there we go, we'll just make sure that all four of the clips have clipped into the grooves on the posts. And there we go, they have done. So that is the heatsink reattached to the back. And we can now turn it over and then just make sure we plug the fan header back in on the motherboard. And there we go, that's now plugged back in and that is reconnected. So now the heatsink is back on the motherboard, we can now put it back inside of the bottom metal shell. So if we get the motherboard like so and we angle it with the back IO going in first on an angle and then once that's roughly lined up with the back holes, we can then slowly lower the board down and then make sure it's all lined up with the holes and the parts. And once we've done that, if we hold the motherboard in the shell and we turn it over, we then need to put the four black screws in back around here, and then the two silver screws in that corner, and the two silver screws in this corner. So if I start by putting the four black screws in around here, and there we go, the four black screws have been put in around here, so I'll now put the two silver screws in this corner. And now the two silver screws have been put in that corner, if we now put the two in this corner, and there we go, the four black and four silver screws have now been put back in, so the motherboard is reattached to the bottom metal shell. So now if we turn it back over like so, we're now first going to put the white post back in over here. So if we get our white post that had the screw, I'll just unscrew it back out of it, and we place it lining up the holes on the motherboard with the little plastic post on the bottom, and then I'll just turn it round to this side, and I will put the screw back into this white one, lining it up with the hole in the side of the metal shell. And there we go, that white post is now back in there. And if we turn it back around again, we're now gonna put the two black posts back in the front here. So these ones don't need any screws, so it's just the two little plastic posts on the bottom for lining up with the holes on the motherboard. And then if you just squeeze together the two pins at the front and push them through the metal like so, they will then clip back into place. There we go, so those two are now back in there and clipped in the front. Now we need to put the touch board back on the front, so if I turn it up like so, so you can see it, when I was gonna plug it back in, and then we need to put the three screws back in on the front. And there we go, now those three screws are back in. We can now turn it back like so, and we will now just put the disk drive back in. So if we get our disk drive, we're going to line it up so these plastic posts on the bottom 
line up with the holes on the motherboard. So if you just get the drive into the gap on the metal case here first, so if you just gently squash it up on one side of the padding, then you should be able to get it in on the other, and that will get it roughly in place. And then you just have to move the drive around slightly until you feel it drop into the holes on the motherboard. And there we go, it's now dropped into the holes on the motherboard. So we now just need to plug the SATA cable here back into the header on the motherboard. And then we need to plug the yellow power cable also back into the plug that is next to the SATA plug on the motherboard for the disk drive. So there we go, those two are now back in there. And now if we get our drive, and same again, we're going to line up the two plastic posts on here with the holes on the motherboard. So if we roughly place it where it should be, and then we just move it around a little until it falls into the hole, like so. And then we plug the SATA cable back in, and we plug the power cable in, like so. So there we go, that's those two plugged back in there. And now that's been done, we can now put the metal shield back on the top. So if we get our metal shield, if you have disconnected this little plastic connector, you want to screw it back into the case. Else instead if you've left it attached like I have, all we need to do is orientate the front top shell like so. Turn it to the side like that and then plug this cable back into the header on the motherboard. Now there is only one way it will go, so if you look on the side, there are little ridges on the side of the plug that line up with the little slots on the plug on the motherboard. So if you line those up and you plug the plug back into the motherboard, like so, and now that's plugged back into there, like so, we can now gently put the metal case back on the top, making sure that the antenna cables and the speaker cable do not get trapped between. Now we've got this whole shell back on, we now need to put it back into the bottom plastic case. So if we get our plastic case, and we get the rest of the console, and we just place it inside like so, and there we go. It's now placed back in. You can do that before you put the metal lid on, or you can do it after. And now that's been done, we now just need to put the eight screws back in there, 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 and there, to reattach the top metal case to the plastic case on the bottom. And there we go, those eight screws are now back in. So now we want to get our wireless board, and we want to make sure that the antenna cable is out of the way, and we then just want to plug the male connector back into the female connector that is visible through this slot here. So if we line it up and then push it down, and now that's been pushed down, we now want to put the two screws back in. There we go, now those two screws are back in. We now want to plug this end of the antenna cable back in on the board. So hopefully you should be able to see it wants to go back into that plug there. So you want to line it up over the top and then just press it down. Now these can be a little fiddly to get lined up nicely, but just make sure they are lined up properly before you push them or you could end up damaging them. So now it's over the plug correctly. If I now push it down, it now just pops on like so. Now we've done that, we now need to plug it back in on the front panel. So we'll do the same again, but plug this end of the cable into the small header on the front up here. And now that's plugged in, we also want to plug back in our speaker cable back into this plug here. There we go, so that's also now plugged back in. Now we want to get our front panel board back, and we want to orientate it like so. And we now need to plug the ribbon cable back in to the front of the touch board. So the blue plastic piece here needs to go over the plug as you plug it back in. And make sure that when you're plugging it back in, that the plug is in that position, the open position. And then once it's in and over this plug here, we will then push each side of that to close it like that. So if I open that back up, that's what it looks like when it's open. And then we push the top of that to close it back up once the cable is in. So this can be a little fiddly, but you want to get the cable plugged into the plug with the blue over the top of it. And then once the cable is seated, you then want to push it closed like so. So I don't know how well you'll be able to see that. But that is now plugged back in to the front panel board. So now, carefully making sure not to damage the ribbon cable, we now just want to line up the teeth on the bottom into the gaps on the bottom of the plastic here. And then you want to slowly, once it is lined up with the holes, tilt it towards a console like so. And then once it gets to around this point here where it's close to being filling up, if you then use both your hands to keep it pushed down and then slowly move into the console like so. So there we go, now that front panel is back on. We now just need to put the top plastic shroud back on. So to do that, if we get our big plastic piece at the top, 
and then we roughly line it up with the gaps and now we've made sure that it is now inside of the bottom shell so there is no parts of the top shell sticking out. We can now tilt this front panel back slightly just so there is enough gap to get it to line up with the rest of the clips and then we can push this top panel down and that should clip it to the rest and then we can push the front panel back in slightly until it clips in with the clips on the top. Now it's easy to get this front panel in first and then just move it back slightly rather than connecting it back up to this whole top piece and trying to get them both in at once. So again, if you put this front panel in and then pull it back a little so there is still a gap along here, push this top plastic case down once it's inside of the bottom case and all of these clips around the side clip back in. Then you can push this front panel back that little bit just to clip into the clips along here. So now that is back together, we just need to finish off on this side here. So if we first get our little insert piece and we orientate it like so, and then we slide it in and then finally we get our vent side and we place it over the top like so and just clip it back in and there we go it's now back together so guys there we go hopefully you liked the video if you liked it don't forget the like button if you dislike to hit the dislike button subscribe for more content like this and i'll see you another time bye